Gran Turismo, drifting is arguably one of the most fun things that you can do in the game. When most people start to drift, a lot of them assume that drift cars are set up loose in order to spin the tires easily. In reality, most drift cars are actually set up to be grippy. By using both forward grip and side grip, the driver can maximize speed and precision. In drifting, there are many different ways that you can get more grip from your car. Stay tuned as we explore 5 tips to improve grip in your drift car. So before we get started, I do want to explain grip direction. Now unlike grip racing, drifting is unique because grip levels are actually dialed in for two different directions. Maximizing grip in one direction will reduce grip in the other. Forward bite is the traction the car has in direction of the rear wheels. Side bite is the traction the car has in direction of the front wheels. Now, too little forward bite and you'll have slow acceleration and slow transitions. Too much and the car will start moving towards the inside of a turn when you're on throttle. Too little side bite will cause the car to follow the front tires during a drift. This can cause you to take a wider angle and wash out. You see, there's a fine balance between forward bite and side bite. Each car will have different settings in order to find that balance. This will depend on wheelbase, weight, horsepower, and even driver preference. Now with that being said, let's get started. Number one, natural frequency and damper ratio. When most people start to drift, the common thought is to use stiff springs and dampers to force the rear of the car to transfer weight. This is why you see a lot of beginners spin out and struggle to control the car during drift. Most competitive drift cars have fairly soft suspension to help the car transfer weight and momentum more progressively to the rear tires. Now if the rear suspension is too soft, then the car won't effectively transfer power to the rear wheels. Generally, softer springs will create more forward and side grip, but you have to remember that dampening needs to be adjusted to match the natural frequency. This will ensure the right amount of wheel travel. You want to avoid having the car bottom out during a drift. Now don't get me wrong, stiffer suspension does have its benefits, as it's much easier to brake traction and initiate a drift, which is why most beginners think stiff suspension is the way to go. The correct natural frequency and damper ratio will be based on weight, wheelbase, and driver style. Number two, ride height. Oftentimes, ride height isn't expected to have as much of an effect on grip as it actually does. Many people run lower ride heights to give the car a sleek appearance. However, this actually compromises the amount of grip available when drifting. Reducing a car's ride height does have the advantage of lowering its center of gravity, and it helps to reduce weight transfer. But it also has negative side effects. As you lower your car, you begin to change the suspension geometry and drop the roll center below ground. With the roll center below ground, more weight is transferred through the springs, making body roll more pronounced. Proper ride height for your car will depend on weight, wheelbase, and natural frequency. To keep things simple, if you lower your car and begin tucking any of the tires, you've probably gone too low. Number three, alignment settings. Camber and toe angle are important to getting the proper weight transfer and grip in your drift car. Every car and track will require a different setup, so there's no simple way to suggest alignment settings. In general, many drifters will run a bit of toe out in the front to help with self-steering and a bit of toe in in the rear to help with forward and side bite. Negative camber in the front will offer more side bite, while running zero camber in the rear will offer the best forward bite. Adding rear camber will increase the side grip, but remember that adding grip in one direction lowers grip in the other. Number four, anti-roll bars. When comparing grip setups to drift setups, sway bars will be one of the more noticeable differences. Traditional grip racers use stiff rear bars and soft front bars. In drifting, we use stiff front bars and soft rear bars. Front sway bars are used to control the feel of the steering. The rear bar is mostly used to control side bite, and stiffer bars will actually reduce grip. Now this can make the car easier to initiate, but it leads to less predictable transitions. A softer rear bar will allow for more side bite and more predictable transitions, but it will make it a little harder to initiate. Number five, tire compound and sizing. 
Tires are the only point of contact between the car and the ground, so it's important not to overlook them. When it comes to compounds, harder tires offer more durability at the cost of grip, while softer compounds offer more grip at the cost of durability. Generally speaking, most cars will see an increase in performance when fitting larger wheels and tires. Low profile tires will allow for less tire flex and wider wheels will increase the contact patch, increasing grip. So as I've mentioned throughout the video, these tips will depend on weight, wheelbase, horsepower, and driver preference. Remember that tuning is just a tool. It's not meant to fix issues caused by driver error. But that's it for today. Please like the video if you found this information useful, and thank you for watching.